if you've just received reviewers' comments on your research paper, you probably either want to scream, punch the wall, swear, or maybe you just want to really make yourself into a ball and go into bed and cry for the rest of the week. Reviewers' comments can sometimes be very frustrating and difficult to deal with. After all, you know, the research paper is your baby that you've been working on sometimes for several months or maybe even a year. And now this unknown person comes to you and tells you your work is absolute sh and you need to review it in order to have it accepted in our journal. So that's why in this video, I wanted to give you my top tips for actually responding to reviewers' comments and doing it without getting frustrated and doing it also efficiently. So let's dive right in. Since doing my PhD in 2018, I've been regularly publishing um, two, three research papers every year. So I've gotten quite a lot of experience with different reviewers and different journals. And there are some really important strategies that I think can help you as well to maintain your cool, don't get frustrated and be able to efficiently respond to all reviewers' comments, get the article shipped into the journal and most importantly, get it published. So before we dive into all those tips, if you're new here, my name is Marek Kiczkowiak and I run Academic English Now, where I help PhD students and researchers regularly write research papers. And if you're finding this video valuable, click on the like button, smash the subscribe button so you don't miss future videos. So the first tip, and perhaps the most important one, is to just take some time off to let the steam go away. Because usually what happens, at least to me, and let me know in the comments if it's the same for you, when I receive reviewers' comments, my initial reaction is very defensive and also aggressive. My initial reaction is like, I don't agree with you. My paper is great. It's brilliant. You're wrong. Your comments are wrong. Everything you wrote here is not true. That's my initial subconscious reaction. Therefore, the first thing that I always do after receiving reviewers' comments is I just take a couple of days off without looking at them, without thinking about the article too much. Sometimes even as much as like two weeks, depending on my schedule and depending on the other things that are going on. Now, this will help you to, to kind of calm down and consider things rationally, which is the second most important thing. So you need to separate yourself from the research paper. I know that it's your research paper, it's your baby that you've been working on for such a long time and you've given birth to and it was painful and everything and now this reviewer is telling you it's a load of nonsense. But you have to separate emotions and yourself from the paper and view it more rationally, more objectively and consider all the reviewer's comments objectively. Without it, you will never be able to do a good job of responding to those comments. Tip three also involves an important shift in perspective. So a lot of people, when they get negative feedback, they project this negative feedback sort of onto themselves and they start feeling bad about themselves as well. Some might see it as a, you know, literally as an attack on, on them, you know, and they start feeling bad, they start feeling inferior and stuff like this. But really negative feedback allows you to learn. If you don't get any negative feedback ever, you will never learn, right? How did you learn how to walk or how young babies learn how to walk? Well, they fall down all the time and they get a lot of negative feedback. They bump their head, they cry and stuff like this. But have you ever seen a baby learning to walk that they will just stop and refuse to get up to continue walking? No, like the baby will fall down, bump its head, cry for a few seconds and then it continue trying until eventually they learn how to, how to walk. And it's the same with getting reviews of your papers. You need to see it as something positive. You know, the feedback you're getting can genuinely help you to make your paper better. So rather than viewing it with this negative lens that, you know, it negatively reflects on yourself, on your paper, on your research work, no, view it as something positively, you know. Thanks to this feedback, you will make your paper so much better in the end. And this shift really is necessary in order to be able to respond to feedback well and effectively. Now, enough of these, you know, mental games, they're important and they're important fundamentals. But now, once you've shifted your perspective, 
the fourth thing that you really need to do is just to assess the damage. Usually what I do is I just read all the comments given by the reviewer or reviewers if there was more than one and I try to kind of assess the damage. What, what do I mean by that? Well, I try to either mentally or physically rank the comments in terms of their severity. In other words, how bad actually is it? And how much work is it going to involve? Let me give you an example. Somebody might say, a reviewer might say, um, I can't see any novel contribution of this study. Initially, you might think, Jesus, that's really bad. Maybe I have to redo the whole study. But if you read into it, what it might actually mean is that you have to write an additional paragraph in the conclusion or in the introduction where you specifically highlight the contributions of your study. Maybe you actually haven't done it. So now writing a paragraph like that will take five minutes. It will be super easy to do, right? So it doesn't take much effort. On the other hand, there might be bigger problems. For example, the reviewer might say that, you know, this paper would benefit from a more extensive review of X, Y, and Z literature. Now, this is not a very severe comment, but it will take a lot of effort to fix because you'll have to read that literature. And especially if you're not familiar with it, and probably you aren't, because if you were, you would have included it in your paper, it's going to take a while to you know, find those papers, read them, and then write a couple of paragraphs that, you know, that will fit into your paper. So this is what I mean by assessing damage. And that should be, you know, after shifting your mental perspective about the reviewer's comments, this should be the first thing that you do. Now, the fifth tip that I've got for you is, it has to do with which comments to respond to first. What I personally like to do is I like to sometimes start with the easiest comments that I can just, you know, deliver like this. Why? Because this allows me to gain some momentum, you know? Sometimes responding to reviewers' comments might seem like this overwhelming task that can never be finished, you know? And the more you look at it, the more overwhelmed you feel and the more negative you feel and stuff like this. So sometimes I like to take easy comments. Like one of the comments that, that I recently got was that, you know, there were some uh, spelling mistakes or that uh, there was one sentence, the first sentence of the introduction was the same as in a previous paper previously published somewhere, right? These are easy things to, to fix that I can fix immediately. And then, you know, usually I will climb sort of the level of difficulty and then I'll start addressing more and more difficult comments and that allows me to gain momentum and keep going because sometimes if you start with the most difficult thing you can get stuck and this is even more frustrating tip number six is to plan as well what do i mean by that well some comments addressing some of the reviewers comments might involve some extra work for example if you need to read extra literature in order to write an additional literature review section you, you can't do it in the next 10 minutes like you need time maybe several hours maybe even a day to find that literature read it and then start thinking how you're going to write it up right and similarly, if you need to redo some experiments or redo some analysis, right? This is also going to take time. So what you need to do is to plan it effectively. For example, you know, if you need to be redoing some of the experiments because the reviewer asks you to do that, you, you need to plan them into your weeks, right? And then at that same time, meanwhile that happens, you can also find time to address some of the other comments of the reviewer, right? So you wanna find things that you can kind of do simultaneously. I don't mean at the same time, I don't mean multitasking because that doesn't lead to productivity, but I mean at different parts of the same day. Because running an experiment will take a couple of days, right? Um, or redoing some statistical analysis. So while that's running and while you're doing that, maybe in the morning, in the afternoon, you can find some time to respond to other easier comments from the reviewer. So definitely plan things. Now, a very important tip number seven is to keep track changes. And I've learned that the hard way with one paper um, that I corrected not such a long time ago, for some reason I forgot to keep track changes and I just made all the changes in the paper and then when I submitted it, the editor got back to me and they said, well, where are the changes? There are no highlights in the text. And I was like, 
yeah, I forgot to do that. So I had to go back and highlight all the changes and everything. So you don't want to make that mistake. So keep track changes or maybe highlight any changes you're making into your paper in yellow so that they're easily visible to the reviewer. And then this makes the reviewer's life easier and it provides the reviewer evidence that you've actually made the changes that he or she required you to make. Tip number eight is to create a separate document in which you're going to respond to the reviewer. So what I like to do is like, I'll take a comment that I'm responding to right now and I'll copy and paste it into that separate document, right? And I'll say reviewer's comments, copy and paste the comment and then below it, I'll write, you know, uh, the response and then I'll explain to the reviewer what I actually did. So you're keeping track changes in the document, but you also want to, you know, let the reviewer know exactly what you did in the paper and how you responded to those comments. Now, a little pro tip in here while you're doing it, while you're responding to the reviewer, what I like to do is basically thank the reviewer for every comment. So usually the way I start my response is something like, um, thank you for this in insight, I appreciate it. What I did to change it was blah, 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 right? Um, or similarly, you know, um, you're absolutely right. This was an oversight on my part. Now in the text, I included blah, blah, blah. And it's very simple, right? But it pays off in the long run. You know, reviewers are busy people. They don't even get paid for reviewing those articles, right? Uh, they're probably doing a lot of research, lecturing. They don't have time, just, just like you. So if you're polite to them, it just, you know, I, I think it will make their life easier and they're more likely to feel more positive towards your changes as well. Now, the last thing that I want to talk about is whether you should include all the changes requested by the reviewer. Should you ever say, no, I'm not going to do this change that you requested me to do? So 99% of the cases, I would say, just do whatever the reviewer says because you know if we view the reviewer's comments from from that different mindset that i explained to you at the beginning that these comments are not an attack on you or an attack on the paper that they're actually there genuinely to try and help you make the paper better 90 percent of the time the reviewer is right and you might have not seen something that is necessary to include Right? So I would say, you know, for most comments in most of the articles that, I, that I've gotten, I just usually do whatever they tell me to do. And this makes my life easier because once you start arguing in your mind with the reviewer, no, this, this, is, this isn't right, I included this, you didn't see it, it's your fault, it's not my fault. Like you're wasting so much mental energy and it's just not worth it. I mean, what's the point? And ultimately, if you wanna argue with the reviewer, then they probably won't accept your paper anyway. So it's just so much easier and so much smoother to just try to do whatever they suggest you to do. Now, there is this you know, rare type of cases where you might want to say no to the reviewer. And I've, I've done it a couple of times. Like, for example, in the paper that uh, I'm doing right now, I just got the first rounds of reviews, and one of the comments said that, you know, at the end of the introduction, uh, the reviewer says, the author states the contributions of the paper. And we think that this would be more appropriate in the conclusion rather than in the introduction, and we would, we would recommend removing it, or something along those lines. I mean, this really, I, I could remove it, but, you know, it's fine that if you look at many papers in many different fields, some of them in do include main contributions in the introduction. And there are good reasons for doing that. And I've got another video on introductions where I talk a lot about that. So I just responded to the reviewer politely here. You know, thank you for your, for your suggestion. I appreciate it. I, the contributions are also highlighted in the conclusion, but there are several reasons why they're also appropriate to highlight in this introduction. One, two, three, these are the reasons, right? But this was just one comment that I said no to. All the others, I just did whatever the reviewer said, right? So remember, when you're responding to the reviewer's comments, probably the most important thing you have to do first is your mind shift. View it more objectively. Don't view it as an attack on yourself. View it as an opportunity to learn. 
And if you've enjoyed this video and you want to work with me more personally to regularly publish research papers in high impact journals, then schedule a free one-to-one -one consultation. The link is right below this video. Uh, we're going to meet one-to-one -one and discuss what your current challenges are, what you want to achieve, and see if this is something that we can help you with.